Praise the Lord, global Christian friends of the world. Now that we have seen uh, and understood, and think about this statement in verse 18. I am he that liveth, and I am alive forevermore. Amen. What kind of a God uh, that it takes to make an ever-living creature that size. Think about that. And look at the government of this creature. We're going to see how great the government of this creature is when it is written unto the angels, not to the churches, but unto the angels. And the mystery has been solved. We said that the word revelations means to take the cover off, and we have taken the cover off the mystery of the seven churches and the seven angels. This is nothing fictional. This is nothing imaginary, but this is godly, spiritual, and truthful. Now that the mystery has been solved, and keep one thing in mind, he laid his right hand on John, which had seven stars in his right hand. So, you looking at John on the Isle of Patmos trying to write to angels in heaven, it is not going to compute. You can look at John on the Isle of Patmos writing to the churches of Asia that will compute. But the two do not conflict nor they do they comply. And uh, John had said in verse 4, in verse 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Verse 4. But now when you get down to chapter 2, verse 1, this is what we read. Unto not the church, but the angel or the star of the church of Ephesus. And this is where... A lot of knowledge is going to part company because we are trying to interpret heavenly things with an earthly meaning. Cannot be done. Cannot be done. I'll give you an example so that you may understand what Jesus himself said uh, in John 3, 12, if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Now, that's John chapter 3, verse 12, the gospel of John. So there are earthly things and there are heavenly things. And this brings about a great knowledge that need to be given to the saints and to the servants of the God that told them that they are to reign as kings and as priests 
upon the earth. This is the God that gave this book to Jesus Christ for his servants. And those that don't have this knowledge or know these secrets, they are not meant for you. We must tell the truth of the whole matter. Because he himself said uh, that he gave it to Jesus to show unto his servants. And uh, there is no greater understanding. There is nothing else to understand except the truth of this knowledge of God. There are a lot of people that say they know God, but they don't know God. Nicodemus was one. Jesus had to correct him. There are the nations across the history of the world that say they know God. Uh, Revelation corrects them because he did not give this book to those nations, but he gave this book to Jesus to show unto his servants. And the cover is being taken off so that you may understand uh, God and understand the things of God so that none of these things of God will be a mystery unto you according to Jesus. When Jesus made this statement, in Mark 4.22, there is nothing hid uh, which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret that it should come abroad. Uh, that's Mark chapter 4 verse 22. Understand that. And uh, you who let the word fall by the wayside, come up, come out, and come in, so that you may understand uh, God in your life and uh, for your life. Now, since nothing is to be hid, Let's look at chapter 2, verse 1. Not unto the church, but unto the angel of the church. Not unto the church of Ephesus, but unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Right. Not in verse 11, what thou seest write in the book and send it unto the seven churches, Ephesus being one, but down here in chapter 2, verse 1, write these things unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. And uh, we will pick up on this as we go forth to the writing of the church of Ephesus and the writing of the angel of Ephesus next time. God bless you. Amen.